All right, so how many were, um, when you were in school, that you had shop? Remember shop? Okay, so shop. Did you? Did you I did, did do shop. Did you? Well, I, I did shop, yeah, like one quarter, and that was it. So not my gifting. You're not actually that good. No. That <laughs> there are other so areas that I'm What, I'm what shop did you do? You're talking about like, I think it was, like, a, it was, like, a, it was like wood shop. Wood shop, okay. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. they have a different kinds of shops, you know. Yeah. So well, I did no, metal I shop know. because I figured metal shop, mm. that's where real men go. Clearly. Not just hanging out with wood. <laughs> no, I'm not. Tell Mr. Eaton that. No, I wish I would have gone to <laughs> wood shop now because like it didn't work out so well for me in metal shop. You know, I'll just tell you that right now. So should have went to wood shop. But you know they do pottery nowadays. It's so cool to do. Yeah, they do pottery. Anybody in pottery shop like? Nobody? They do pottery, so my, my kids were actually in pottery sh shop or pottery class or whatever mm -hmm. they call it, and would, would bring home things they made. Mm -hmm. And so um, we had this one coil, it's called a coil pot. Yes. Now, it's, it's not the best looking pot you'd, you find, it was made by our youngest son, but he brought it home, and so it's kind of a treasure, you know? Yeah, they're functional, it's, the coil it's, pot. It, it's, it's functional, so, <laughs> um, but have you watched a person you know, spin that wheel thing and make pottery. It's pretty fascinating, it really. It is amazing to watch. It is. And mm -hmm. so, like, they're using their hands, and that, that clay is coming up and it's being formed, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. by the potter yes. or the artist or whatever mm -hmm. they're called. And sometimes they use a little tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they just kind of, like, scrape it in, make it be just look. It's, it's amazing how it works. It's, it's incredible. The, the one thing I, I've learned is that the clay never creates itself. Well said. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, you can't put the clay there and go, it's like, okay, do something. Make a pot. <laughs> like, it takes the hands of the potter, right? right. Yeah. It takes the hands of the potter. And so, but by the way, Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father, and we're the clay, and you're the potter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like today. It's the action of the potter that creates. And you have been created, and I have been created for God's good, good purposes. Mm -hmm. um, I love the instructions that, and the image, imagery that God gave to the prophet Jeremiah. Just listen to it. From Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So Jeremiah goes down there. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the clay thing. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he reworked it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to do. Hmm. Now, I, I kind of paused on that actually this morning earlier, and I wrote myself a, a note. It wasn't the clay telling the potter what I want to be. Right. It's the potter that determined... Um, what the pot was going to look like, clay was going to look like. Mm -hmm. So God directed Jeremiah to go down there and to watch him mold clay into pots on his wheel. And as Jeremiah watched, right, there was this flaw that took place in the pot, in the, in the potter's hands, and the potter pressed the clay into a lump and then formed it into, a, into another pot. So you got to ask the question, what's going on here? What's the word to Jeremiah? God announced that the potter and the clay were an illustration of his relationship to his people. They were like clay in his hands, and God alone has the right um, to do as he wills. Mm -hmm. right? That's kind of the message. That, and it means something for you and me today. Right. So, right? I mean, it was true, true then. Yeah, it was true then, then yeah. but it's also true for us today. You see, God has shaped you and molded you as he wills for his good purpose. And just like we talk about that potter shaping that pot, he's, he's molded you, he's shaping you into a certain kind of person. And that wasn't just like a one-time thing. He is constantly shaping, constantly molding you for his good purpose. And so we have to ask the question, well, what is the good purpose that God is shaping us for? What is all this work that this potter is doing all this work for? And, and first and foremost, we have to recognize that we're shaped, we're molded to give glory to God. We are here to glorify God, to honor Him. And we do that by being in relationship with Him. You know, there's so many things that we can find ourselves involved in and think that we can be doing. But the primary thing, the thing that we come back to first and foremost, is being in relationship with Him. That's how we give Him glory. 
But it also includes this gospel life that we've been talking yeah, about. Yeah. We've been in this series called The Gospel Life, and this gospel life, it requires something of us. As God is shaping and molding us, he's shaping us to have a certain kind of character. And we're talking about the character of Christ. That's what he's trying to, to mold and shape within us. Exactly. So when you think about, I mean, it would be proper, I think, to look at one another. We're not, we're not going to do it and say, hey, God, God molded you and God created you. Mm-hmm right, into the person that you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's going to include tall, short, right, all types of, of body shapes and sizes and stuff like that, and gifts and talents that he has given to us. He created you. Someone said this past week, I was really, really um, impacted by this statement. It was Andy Stanley actually speaking of his father, who has just recently passed away. And in the last days, his father spoke some words to, to his son, Andy. Some of you know that name, Andy Stanley. And then he made this statement, and I thought, you know, that's so true of our Heavenly Father. The source of the word determines its weight. The source of the word determines its weight. Who God says you are is powerful. It's weighty because it's sourced in God. And God created you, formed you into the person that you are. Yeah, in the character of Christ. So let's call it Jesus. So the question then is, is like, what is the character of Christ? Well, we're going to dive into a um, little bit of it this morning uh, from Mark chapter 10, verses 43 and 45. But it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So you have to read that passage and understand like, like what's going on here because John and James, they, they had just made this, this request, right? And Jesus is responding to it and they wanted to be in this, in this position of honor and of course, uh, authority, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where we want to be. Right. <laughs> like we, we want to be in that place right there. And then Jesus uses the example of the Gentile rulers. And that's where we, that's the background of this. Right. And so he said that these Gentile rulers, like there, there's a certain way that they go about life, yeah. right? Like there's a way that they do things. I'm just going to help you understand this. Yeah. That they rule, they lord it over the people. They oppress their subjects. They exercise authority over them. They exploit them. And so Jesus is saying, like, there's, there's a better way. There's a different way. He said, in fact, it's not going to be that way for the people of the kingdom of God. Like, if you're going to be in the kingdom, if you're going to be following me, the way that you lead, the way that you rule, the way that you come into greatness is completely different. It's not whoever aspires to become great must seek power and position and status. Instead, whoever aspires to become great among you must voluntarily enter in useful service to others. It's completely turning the whole thing on its head. And we see it in the example of Jesus. In fact, there's a story that, yeah. I, that we see in, in John chapter 13. And what we see there is a moment in which um, they, it's the Passover meal. And, it's, and as they're prepared to eat it, before, Jesus, before they break out the meal, Jesus stands up and he takes off his robe and he prepares to wash the disciples' feet. And he, as he pours out the water and he starts to wash, Simon Peter, as he gets to Simon Peter, Simon's like, no, you, you're not washing my feet. Because Simon was still under, under, he was not aware of the way kingdom greatness works. You see, in Simon's mind, in Peter's mind, the way kingdom greatness is, if you are a ruler, if you are a leader, then you lord it over. That's the way that it works. But Jesus wasn't just talking about this idea of what it means to live as a, as a true leader with greatness. He lived it out right in front of him. And he said, if you're going to live into this kingdom, if you're going to rule, if you're going to to live well and be great, I love that he talks about the way of being great. He says it looks completely different. In the kingdom, greatness looks a whole lot like foot washing. That's what it looks like. Humbly serving others, just like Simon Peter did. And you know, as Jesus did, because our response is like, when we see something like that, our first initial response is like, no way. Like, the better way to do things is to lower it over, to push hard, to make sure that we're over. We have control of everything. But foot washing? I know we're just like Simon, aren't we? Like, no, 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 no. But Jesus says, if you're going to be a part of my kingdom, you've got to let me wash your feet as well. And then in verse 12, he says this, Do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am. If then your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Yeah, so I think what we should do is like put everybody at rest and easy. We're not having a foot washing service this morning. <laughs> yeah, are you thankful for that? I remember growing up, you know, we had foot washing. Does anybody remember that? Hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe some of you were participating in that, you know, hmm. but um, I'm thinking like, I'm, that's not, no. I'm glad we're not doing that not today. Doing that. So, but here's the deal. I think that we can, you know, it's a cultural thing. We'll talk about that in just a moment, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we go like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do the actual foot washing thing. And you know, I think we're free to say no to that. Mm -hmm. But we are not free to say no to serving one that's another. Because that's the example Jesus set before us and said, now mm -hmm. you go and do as I have just done for you. Jesus, in this seemingly simple act, sets aside cultural norms and calls his disciples, including you and me, to a different lifestyle. So it, it's really is cause for you and me to sit back and go, okay, um, what's it look like for me? What's this different lifestyle look like for me? Am I more drawn to kind of the Gentile thing, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, positions of power and seeking power and, and, and authority? Um, or is it following the example of Jesus and serving one another, those inside the faith community and I think those outside. And it's this one on the, the, it's, it, it's one that outside the reality, it's outside the reality, I think, of, of um, maybe how we are sometimes drawn, right? It's, mm -hmm. It steps, it steps outside of sometimes that desire to have a position of authority or to be, be, be served. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit working in you and in me that allows us, I think, to live this way. And so this lifestyle calls us into a life of service. Mm -hmm. And here's the first thing. You ready? Serving over status. Serve over status. Although the disciples would likely have washed the feet of Jesus, washing one another's feet was completely out of their thinking. So <laughs> right. I'll do your feet, right? Because like <laughs> Jesus, right? But I'm not going to do yours. Right. That's completely out of their thinking, mm -hmm. right? Because the whole foot washing, um, it was a necessity due to the, you know, as we know, to the dusty and dirty conditions and so on. But here's the deal. The act of foot washing or serving in this way was really reserved for the lowliest of servants. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to wash your feet, mm -hmm. I'm putting myself in a position of one of the lowliest of that, of that culture. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly wasn't anything of stature Not at right? all. or position of authority. Mm -hmm. But isn't it true? I'm going to say something, and you just agree. You go, you, yes, that's true. We sometimes like to wear our status, don't we? <laughs> yes. We sometimes like to wear our status, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go, right there. Um, and that leads us to view other people in a way that Christ calls us to step away from. I remember years ago, I think it was my brother, my older brother, who told me this story uh, of a church um, that is within driving distance of here. How's that? <laughs> and it was during, during the era that some of us grew up in, in the hippie era, era right, mm. during, that, during that time. And um, um, this group of hippies, mm -hmm. or people who were um, kind of outside the cultural norm, mm -hmm decide that they were going to go to church, and, and the church leadership heard about it. And um, two things happened. One, there was a group um, that had determined that they're not going to allow the hippies in the church. Hmm. So they actually were standing at the door in order to stop them from coming in. This is a true story. Hmm. There was eventually um, kind of a redo of their thinking, and eventually, they were, they were welcomed in. But you see, we can begin looking at other people mm -hmm. and go like, you're kind of outside. Mm -hmm. You're kind of outside. These are the people Jesus calls us to serve because it's a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the, example, in the example of Jesus. So, yeah, it's serving over status. Right. So that's one part of the serving yeah. is the serving over status. And then there's this realization that there's a serving to love. Mm -hmm. This foot washing lifestyle calls us to the serving to love others. And the idea of, of serving and loving was so important to Jesus that uh, he had a little word for a lawyer that came his way. Yeah. You see, a lawyer came and asked, like, well, so how do I get to be a part of the kingdom? Like, what does it mean to, to get in? What do I need to do? 
And it was kind of an interesting question because, you know, we hear a lawyer, maybe you, if in the version you read, you might see the word lawyer. You might be thinking of the person who stands before the judge and does that. But this is a different kind of lawyer. This was a, a person who, who understood the religious law. Maybe it, it, sometimes I might think of it as a pastor, somebody who was learned, who understood the ways of, of God's world. And yet here he is, the person who's supposed to understand it all, standing before Jesus saying, like, how do I get in? What, it is, what do I need to do? And so here's this expert asking the question about eternal life. And Jesus, after saying some other things about this is what it means, this is what needs to be done, he, he tells them a story. And he responds by saying this, that there was a, a, a guy um, in this story, and we just have to understand that one of the characters in this story, um, the story, one of the characters is a Samaritan. And by the Samaritans, they are the, the most hated of races in this, at this time. But as Jesus is telling this story, I mean, he talks about this, this person who's beat up. It's a Jewish guy. He's on the ground. He's beaten up. He's robbed. And he's basically left for dead. And one of the religious leaders, the lawyer, walks by and he sees him. He just passes by and just leaves him. But another person, one of the temple associates, the temple, temple per- people who help make things happen, he sees this person that's sitting on the road. And he doesn't just walk by. He walks by and like, makes his way to the other side of the road and then makes his way around. But then there was a Samaritan that I mentioned that is hated by everyone. They are like the scum of the earth to these Jewish people. And when this Samaritan person saw the Jewish person laying there beaten, he came and took care of his wounds. He put him on his donkey and got him to a spot where he's able to make it to an end and took care of all of his needs, not just for then, but continues to like whatever else you need while he's there. He told the innkeeper, take care of it and I will make sure to, to pay you back when I come back on my return journey. You see, Jesus, when he talks about this idea of what it means to serve others, it, it, it moves us into places that, that sometimes are not necessarily comfortable. Mm-hmm. It's this idea of, of serving in a way that moves us to love. What we see in this story is that we are called to be living in such a way that loving God and loving our neighbor happens through the acts of kindness. Yeah, and I think, you know, even as teaching story of Jesus, we see the whole status thing going on there too, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, serving over over status. So Galatians, by the way, the book of Galatians is our next series. We're going to be studying the book of Galatians in a series that we're calling No Other Gospel because there's no other gospel. A few weeks away. Okay, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. So then, as we have opportunity, everybody say opportunity. 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 So what would happen if you and I took and, and just, just uh, reflected on yesterday, even this past week, of how many opportunities maybe were there that we maybe either missed or we just were in a rush and we walked by? Maybe. So then, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So I, I can interpret this, this passage this way. Do good to, to fellow followers within the community, but move outside your doors to the everyones of the world. So it begins here, and it moves outward. Everyone may begin with just one. I love the phrase, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Just start, start with, the, with the one. Go into all the world, Jesus commands us, means that we will move into the marketplace, right? So go into all the world. Go to where people are living. Serve them, right? Mm -hmm. Following the example of Jesus. And when we love others through our deeds, Jesus says you're doing something very, very important. And what we're doing is like we're switching. It's like we're switching on the light in the dark for everybody to see. When you do these things, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So our good deeds that we do opens the door for the good news. Now we all know, and, and, and I probably don't need to say it, but good, good deeds do not um, equal uh, repentant heart, right? Right. Right. I mean, um, it's not about good deeds, but, but good deeds are the result of a changed mm-hmm. heart, a repentant heart. Our good deeds open the door to the good news. This is how we say it. Good deeds, goodwill, good way. Say mm-hmm. it with me. Good deeds. Good deeds. Uh, goodwill. Goodwill. Good way. Good way. So our good deeds create goodwill that opens the door to the good way or the gospel way. Um, 
It's a lifestyle that we are called to live. Right. Yeah. Right. And as we talk about mm. this idea of foot washing, then it calls us to think about the way that we serve. And we serve others. And this is the one that really is, is just profound to me, that when we serve others, we're serving Jesus. Yeah. And if we just live with that perspective, that'd be such a game changer, wouldn't it? I mean, Matthew 25, it describes a scene uh, where people are divided into two groups, one on his right and one on his left. And it says, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And in verse 34, it says this, um, and it says, on his right, the sheep who are blessed by the Father, who are blessed by the Father and are welcomed into the kingdom, say, why? For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And so they asked the question, well, when did we see you this way, Lord? I mean, I don't, we don't recall seeing you. I mean, there's a lot of things that we did, but when did we do this? And the king answered him and said, truly, I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did to me. I think that's such a profound yeah, idea. That in the most mysterious and glorious of ways, when we serve others, we're serving Jesus. To keep that in mind, to think like, as we walk throughout our day, like, do we have an opportunity to serve Jesus today? As we serve this person, there's an opportunity to do that very thing. But one of the things we have to realize is that when we do step out and we serve others, there's a cost to that. Mm. When we step out and serve, it's going to require something of us. And even with this reality, we have to actively search for a way to do good and to bless others. That's what Christians have done throughout all of Christendom. Like we've made opportunities to say like we're going to serve others. Sometimes it's going to hurt us. And we do it in big ways and sometimes we do it in what might seem like really small yeah. ways. I mean, kids often lead the yeah. way in this. So, uh, you know, serving, it, it costs in lots of different ways. Good, good, good point. So let me show you a photo, something that happened last, um, two weeks ago, Easter two yeah. weeks ago, mm -hmm. Easter. So um, these are our friends, Matthew and Olivia Fike. So the family attends here. In fact, we're in a small group together. And so Matthew, I think Matthew's eight. I think that's right, eight, eight years old. And so after he had collected eggs, I mean, if you were here that day, I don't know, there were like 10,000 eggs that in like three minutes were gone. That's amazing. <laughs> There's like ants moving across the, the field there, you know, like they were gone. Maybe more like locusts. <laughs> yeah, like locusts, right? And so we, uh, Jen and I were out, out there, and so we went up to the Fike family, and um, Matthew and Olivia had collected their eggs. But what happened next, I've thought about. And um, so uh, Candy, um, Matthew's mom, just shared a story because Matthew had collected his eggs, and you see... His egg basket is, is pretty full. And after he did that, he was, he was out looking for kids who, who didn't have eggs or hadn't collected enough eggs, and he was going to give them some of his. That's pretty cool. I, I thought a child will lead the way, right? Mm -hmm. Serving costs, like I did the work, but hey, you don't have eggs, let me give you some of mine. And that's really the life that Jesus is calling us to, is like giving up something. Mm -hmm. Right. Giving our eggs mm -hmm. to someone who, who maybe doesn't have any. That's, good. Um, that's not a one-off for Matthew, by the way. It's just he does these sort of things. Right. Yeah, it's pre pretty cool. Well, serving has a cost, and then serving has a beginning. It just means that we have to start doing it, you know. And maybe it will be a brand new lifestyle for, for some of us, but serving has a cost, and serving has a beginning. Samuel Johnson said this, he who waits to do a great deal of good at once will never do any. Hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's the next step. So we have this phrase that we've used for um, a long time here at Gateway that we just want to help people take their next step toward Christ. And the next step toward serving, a life of serving, this, this is a different lifestyle, it's kind of upside down, is to do the one thing. When you quietly serve a person in need, you're being shaped or molded into a reflection of Jesus. One of my favorite quotes is from a, a monk hundreds of years ago, John Climacus. He said, this man must employ every means to lift his clay and place it upon the throne. Man must employ every means. So it's just this simple prayer that says, Jesus, 
I'm just giving you my life. Now you mold me and you create me um, into the person you want me to be. Allow me to live out this lifestyle that you have called me to do. Living differently, be an example of Jesus to the world today. Man must employ every means to lift his clay and place it upon the throne. So we're going to do something together. Are you ready? We're going to live this out together. And we're going to do something that um, is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> is that okay? Are you glad you came to church? We, are we going back to the foot washing? No, okay, no, 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 we're, we're, we're not doing the foot washing. But you know what? So here's what we do. So we always talk about um, um, participating um, in giving, right? So we talk about the giving, offering, and, you, and you're generous and, and you do. But this morning, we're going to give you money. Can you say amen? <laughs> we, we're, I, we are going to, yeah, online, we haven't quite figured out how to no, no. give it to the camera there. So I'm sorry, but for in person, we're going to give you money today. Do you not believe us? <laughs> There's something going on. I'm going to invite that, this team to come forward. Come, our host team is going to come forward right now. And, and here's the deal. Um, uh, come on down to the front. And so they're going to be passing out buckets, and there are $5 bills in every bucket. So everyone take a $5 bill. I don't care if you have $100 in your wallet right now. Everyone take a $5 bill. Just start passing them out right now. Everyone, give me one up here. Okay? I want one. Give me one. Everyone take a $5 bill. Thank you, Jimmy. Mario's going to get one there, too. Hey, I got one for you, brother. Oh, thank you. You got three. I got three. All right. <laughs> one. You take one. <laughs> okay. Everyone, I don't care if you have it or if you don't have it. Everyone's going to take a $5 bill, okay? Um, we did not print these. <laughs> these are real. <laughs> right? That's a good clarification. <laughs> <laughs> no, fooled you. They look real, don't they? No, they are. They are. Okay. They're, they're real. So, yeah, it's in no, there. It's, it's in there. Yep. They're, they're, they're real. They're mm -hmm. $5. So, okay. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you some, some rules to live by here with your $5 bill. We're going to bless people. And you're like, five bucks? Yeah, I think we can actually do that for five bucks. Mm -hmm. Someone posted the other day that says $3 to buy a meal at a fast food place, mm -hmm. about three bucks. You, you can actually get a hamburger or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure where, but anyway, um, someone, someone said that. So anyway, you're five dollars. We're, 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 together, we're going to bless people. And here's, here's what it's going to look like. Here are the rules. You cannot trade with somebody in-house here and go, I just blessed you. Oh, bless you. There you okay, go. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> no bueno. That's no good. Okay, you can't do that. So um, this is designed to bless somebody outside, mm -hmm. outside. You with me? You with us? Okay. So there might be someone coming to your mind right now. You know what? This is what we're going to do. Maybe you're going to buy them a card. You're going to use it to buy a card, and you're going to write them a note of encouragement. That works, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah maybe, what else you got? Yeah. Maybe, um, uh, maybe you take like a little st a post-it note and stick it on top of this one yeah. and put it in your wallet for that time when you're driving by somebody and you like, this person could use this. And you might have other b dollar bills in your pocket. But you know that this one's marked specifically to bless somebody. Maybe you hold it for that moment, and then you bless someone. Yeah, that'll work, too. Um, um, you buy a flower. Mm -hmm. That would work, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Bless somebody. I love the idea of you were talking about the idea of pooling up. Yeah, so what happens every week, so you, you guys do it here, too. We see people gathering in groups around, you know, and, and, and so on in here in the lobby and so some of you are may want to pool together and you're going to like here we're going to take put our five dollars together mm -hmm. and it's going to create x number of dollars and we're going to do one thing as a group and we're going to bless somebody mm -hmm. because you may know of someone and we're just going to live this out this way mm -hmm. what do you think let's bless somebody <laughs> we we kind of thought it up, didn't we? <laughs> sort of. So anyway, and what we're going to do now is, is we're just going to take the $5 and uh, it's, listen, it's a token, but it's meant, it's meant to represent something. And we're, we're just going to pray and, and believe 
that God's going to use five bucks. He, he, he can use anything um, to change the life of someone and maybe draw them nearer the gospel because mm-hmm. that's, that's what it's all about, right? Mm-hmm. It's like good, good deeds, good will, good way. And what I'd like to do is just, is just pray, God, take, take this right here. Maybe it just opens the door to someone to hear the good news. So would you take that five bucks? Let's stand together, shall we? And I, I'd like for you to just kind of like, just hold it out, however you do. And we're just going to pray. I'll pray first. Mario will pray second. We're just going to pray that God use this, open the door. So Father, it's, it, it's five bucks. Seems small. But I, I know that, um, that you can take anything and you can use it. Um, to perhaps open the door. Your spirit would use it to open the door for the good news of the gospel. I don't know how you're going to do it. But God, I would pray that as we commit this to you, individually, or maybe we pool our, pool our resources, our $5, um, God, to change someone's life, that you would take it and use it um, to open the door to the good news of the gospel, the gospel life. God, we are so grateful that you are a God who is creative, uh, that you place your spirit within us and, and allow creativity to burst forth. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be so aware of you speaking to us, the ways that you're, you're calling us this week to not just um, talk about the idea of serving, but that we would live out the opportunity to serve those that come in our midst. But we pray that, that as we get an opportunity to bless in this certain way, that it would indeed open up the doors to conversations that may not have happened before. And that might, meet, might lead to, to be able to, to share about your love and your goodness and how you've changed us from the inside out. God, you are so good to us, and we're so grateful for the way that you've changed us, Lord. Lord, we want to share that message with anybody and everybody that we come in contact with. And so, Lord, we do indeed uh, just dedicate uh, not only these dollars to you, but we dedicate our lives to you, that we will be poured out to be able to bless those that we come in contact with. Thank you for serving us. Lord, allow us to serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we want to hear your story, so like share your stories with us so we can share it with others. And do not go from this place and say, we got paid to go to church. Because we will have too many people next week. So, in Jesus' name.